Hey guys, Joshua with Peterson Electric here. I uh, want to talk to you today about charging or wiring um, a sub panel and also a Nissan EV car. Um, we came out to look at this panel for them as a, a free estimate and they asked us if they had any breaker space. With what they had going on and all these twins full in here, there was no way we could add space. Um, these breakers right here show you the difference between the molar and the front tooth, which basically these allow for twins, these are full breakers, and they were completely stuffed, so we could not. So we bought them a 20-30 circuit space panel, allowed them for more tandeming in the future of this, of this panel, and um, basically uh, everything fit fairly well. We had to extend a lot of our grounds in here just to get them to reach. Our neutrals were fine. Um, we did not have to arc fault or GFCI this panel because we did not move it from its original location more than six foot. Um, which is in 210.12 exception B. This talks about right here in the code. I'm going to show you kind of what you're running through here. Um, you're going to be in article 110 under requirements. Definitions of 100 for continuous duty says not anything more than three hours. You have to use a whatever percentage it says for what you're wiring. We're, we're also in branch circuit wiring. We're in also uh, grounding in 250, 310 over conductor size. And then also um, according to Article 625 for electrical vehicle charging. First thing I want to show you is running a 10 gauge wire. Be careful at 244D. It does say you watch your overcurrent protection that these astro marks mean that it's only good for 30 amps. Well, but we can derate this also because it's in the code. Bottom line, 90 degrees Celsius column, 40 amps is what you're good at for number 10. I ran a 10 3nm cable, Article 334 states that, that this is truly an NM cable right here sheathing for Romex. We call it Romex for, it's kind of a slang term. In 625, I want to show you that. Overcurrent protection at 125% right there. So if you take 30 amps, which your continuous load is at 125%, you're going to get 37.5 amps, which is under our 40. So I suggest you can use a 10 gauge cable. We also have to look at voltage drop. From here to here, nothing. Even if you went 100 foot, I wouldn't even consider it. If I was at 150 to 200 feet, I'd consider a voltage drop and step it up one size. Um, the other thing you want to look at is your disconnect. There is something in here in disconnecting that I am going to check on this, but it does state that a lockable open, open in accordance with this disconnect has to be in Article 110.25. I believe that they're dealing with this because either you're over 60 amps or you're more than 150 volts. Well, I am definitely 240 volt, but I'm only 30 amp. So one or the other or both have to apply. So 110.25 talks about you're locking out your breaker size or locking your breaker out your disconnect. This does not have a disconnect. So I'm going to be wiring up a Tesla here. This will be my second one I'm doing this week. And on his installation, it's actually a four wire, and it's no different than a range cord that you disconnect, push, pull on, and push off, and that's it. It's like a plug. Um, and technically, that meets code um, for, for anything that's 240 volts, less than 50 amps. Well, with this right here, this is actually three wire. Here's our grounding. Here's our neutral, which we don't need. But I'm not going to pull put a 10-2 on this truck all the time. It takes up space. I always use a 10-3. Uh, typically, if I'm doing sometimes baseboard heaters will be a 10-2 and a hot water heater 10-2, but motors are 10-3. If you deal with hot tubs, they're typically a 10-3 unless there's Sundance. Um, so we do cooktops uh, that drop in induction and, 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 and uh, small wall ovens. They're all 10 gauge, 10-3 as well. So I typically just cap my white because I don't want two different types on my truck. And then I will go ahead and I, I'll, I'll, I'll land it up here. Um, the other thing you want to consider when doing this is that you're going to have to drill out the back of it. Okay, you're going to need a unibit, which looks like this. So if you're considering doing this yourself as a homeowner, yeah, you're going to need strippers, uh, needle nose, dikes, Allen wrench, keyhole saw, 5 16 nut driver, crimpers. Um, you're going to need a various a lot of tools to do a lot of what you're doing here. So if you don't own these tools and have them, and you don't know what you're doing, don't attempt it at home. You're going to spend $75, 80 bucks just on one bit, and you should have just hired an electrician to be in and out faster. 
Um, but again, we, you don't normally have to change your panel unless your situation calls for it. Now their feeder size is 150 amps coming in here with two watts, so they're fine. We did not need to upgrade this wire to here to the back, plus it had four wires already. It has a bare naked ground, a, a, um, an insulated neutral, and two um, ungrounded conductors, or what we call your hots. Okay, so that's why we changed that out. Um, you also want to make sure you get a bushing on here, and you slit your Romex right without shorting it out, you know, cutting into the wire, the conductor, the insulation. We went in ahead and hung their cord right here as well, okay? Now back to the book though, they're stating that you're supposed to lock it out. I may be wrong on this and I may have to come back and get a different breaker to lock this thing out, but here's the common sense. Yes, there is no disconnect to service this, so you can service it, but the disconnect is right here in the panel. So the code states that even if you had a hot tub in the back of the house, you technically don't have to have a disconnect. You can use your breaker as a disconnect, but what they call the readily acceptable location is different. Let me find it here. Oh, here it is, sorry. Insight, with insight from, with insight. They just like to say a lot of dumb terms. Bottom line, 50 foot. If I'm within sight of a panel to that equipment within 50 foot, I don't have to worry about a disconnect. My breaker is my disconnect. It does have to be a hacker type, which this is, and this is a residential panel, it's a Siemens. I prefer Siemens over all the other brands, I won't name them, but um, bottom line, um, this disconnect is within sight. If the guy accidentally turns the breaker on when he's working on it, he shouldn't be an electrician. Neither should he be a homeowner touching it. So the point is, is that if you pull away because you had to answer the phone and you came back and someone turned the breaker on you, you're going to get shocked. Okay. So maybe we should have it lockable. Now, if this panel was on the other side and I had this, I may not even use a lockable disconnecting means like that if I couldn't find that breaker. I may just go in to find a little disconnect for an AC unit that's a non-fusible type or even make it safer, make it fusible and make sure you're 125% on your fuses there to protect, or excuse me, 125% on your wire, but rating your fuses as they said at 30 amps. So I may go ahead and just put a disconnect there and put a lock on it. And then the customer can have their own key and lock it out and you know, that way no kids are popping it open. That would work as well if they didn't have a plug type pull out like the Tesla does. But anyway, so this is a direct hardwired type is what we call it. And this will go on right here. I'm not pinching no wires here. Okay. Then this right here will go into the car and plug in. And this is just no different than your hose that's going to hang for your hose for your, your, your outside watering. Um, and right here, this can allow itself to hang so the end of it doesn't get beat up or this doesn't get broke off because this is going to be your locking to your car. Okay. So that is really it. I mean, there's other things that we can look at and 625 to talk to you guys about, but make sure you look through this article because this is where most of the code's gonna fall under where you guys are at. The only other suggestion I have is they do talk about ventilation. In the manufacturer's instructions guide, you should have this. If you don't have this, when you sell your car or you buy a used car, make sure you get this when you buy your car used because this tells the electrician a lot of detail in the back this unfortunately didn't tell us enough. It just said 40 amp single phase. But as I dug through more, I could see that my overcurrent is at 30 amps, or excuse me, my current coming in. So that's where I knew to get my wire size at 125%. But the rest of it up front was uh, pretty generic, but it did say, which was nice. It says you can do 208 or 240. 208 is gonna be a three phase in a building. So if you're a guy who has a shop and you have uh, a Y system transformer with 208, 120 volt, um, you're not going to have a 220 to 240 nominal voltage. That's truly going to be 208 to 214. 
and that's a three-phase commercial situation. Running single phase though, only off of two lugs or two pole breaker to run your car. So it won't be a three-phase in the car, but it would be three-phase in the building. So they did account for that. So that basically means it's a multi-voltage sensing in the car because this directly goes in at, at um, 240 and then it does its own inverting inside of the car to do it stepping down to the DC voltage. It inverts the voltage and, and steps it down to 12 volt. Um, so it's like a transformer and an inverter. But it does say that it's a single phase. And in our term, single phase means two hots, okay? Um, it doesn't mean two pole. Uh, it, like you would say, single phase means one hot, two pole is two hots, three phase is three phase. No, single phase means two hots, but it doesn't state that it's a four wire, so you have to assume it's single phase with a ground, and meaning it doesn't have a neutral. But common sense, when you open this up and look in here and read the manual, it doesn't even have a, plot, a spot for the neutral, which is your grounded conductor. Um, other than that, guys, um, hopefully it's helped you out. We do this kind of work all the time, and... Um, the only thing they're going to have to do because this is a firewall is just get this mudded. And they should be able to do that fairly simple. And the panel should pop right back on. Um, anyways, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.